We're going to go ahead and do a t-test the old-fashioned way by using pencil and paper and a little calculator. Remember, a t-test is only used to compare two means from two separate groups. You're going to test the null hypothesis to see if there was a change between the control group and the experimental group. Here's the formula that will give us the test statistic. Remember, the test statistic is not the probability value, but it will tell you where to find that p-value. The x-bar sub 1 refers to the mean of the first group. x-bar sub 2 is the mean of the second group. s sub 1 is the standard deviation of the first group. s sub 2 is the standard deviation for the second group. And the n's are the sample size of each group, respectively. Don't let this thing scare you. Okay, the problem says that one seven-person group was given vitamin B12 three times a day, while another seven-person group was not given any vitamin supplements. After two weeks, both groups were asked to run 50 yards as fast as possible. Their times were recorded to the nearest second. Here's the question. Did the vitamin B12 have an effect on the runners? Step one, find the mean of each group. You add up all the different measurements, divide by the number of measurements. You should get the means. They're listed in front of you. The next step is a little bit harder. We're trying to find a standard deviation. The standard deviation is the square root of the variance, so we're going to go ahead and find the variance. The variance is the difference between each individual measurement subtracted from the mean of that group squared. So you're squaring the difference between each individual measurement and the mean of that specific group. And then you sum all those up. That is your variance. First step to finding a standard deviation. After you found the variance of each group, take the square root of those, and those will give you the standard deviations. Those are listed in front of you. Now, now that you know the numbers, for each of the variables there, go ahead and plug them into the formula. You should get a real number. Just plug and chug. Substituting the values that we just found into the formula gives you the final t-test statistic from this specific problem is 3.0508. We're going to take the absolute value of that. I'm not going to go into detail about that now. But be careful. Again, the, t the test statistic is not the probability value. In the back of your textbook, there should be a T distribution table. Look up the value of T equals 3.0508. You're going to have to estimate with that. And the degrees of freedom is one less than the sample size. That's pretty easy. So you're going, to come, you're going to find the column and the row where the two intersect. Where that does, you get a, a one-sided p-value between 0 .01 and 0 .02. With a probability value between 0 .01 and 0 .02, what that literally means is if you perform this same experiment a million times under this exact same condition, it would only be true about one or two times per hundred experiments. That's not very reassuring. So if it's only true one or two times per hundred under these conditions, that gives you evidence to reject the null hypothesis. In other words, there was a, indeed a significant difference between these two groups. In other words, again, the vitamins did have an effect on the runners. It gave them faster feet. That's all there was to it.